All right. Hi, everyone. I'm Darren Welsh. Um, you may have seen me uh, present before about uh, gamification and other ways that we try to uh, incentivize uh, people to use the wiki. Um, since I first kind of learned about that concept, I kind of dove into it trying to figure out how to write an extension that would add some various elements of gamification. Um, but then I started thinking about it a little bit more with the pitfalls. Um, obviously, you don't want to incentivize just editing the wiki a whole bunch of times or just simple actions that aren't really going to be useful. Um, and so I kind of took a step back and I'm trying to learn more about like what are the right ways to uh, nudge people in the right direction. And in doing so, kind of also by coincidence in reading a book, uh, Thinking Fast and Slow by Daniel Kahneman, um, I learned a lot about um, how we are uh, prone to bias and how we use uh, mental tricks to be lazy in our thinking and how that can impact uh, how we make decisions. So the more I kind of dove down this, uh, this path, the more I realized it's really important uh, to consider how you set up your wiki and how you direct your users to make sure that you're getting the right, uh, the right path that you want out of it. Um, also, for reference, there's a really good page on Wikipedia uh, listing out a bunch of cognitive biases. And so that's where I just grabbed a bunch of them that um, I thought would be fun to discuss. Uh, for this presentation. So uh, I'm not a psychologist or a neuro, uh, neuroscientist, um, but I did stay in a Hampton Inn last night. Uh, but I think it is also fascinating. I think it's really interesting to think about like, what is it that drives us to do things a certain way or to make decisions that, the way that we do. Um, and so the more I read about these, I, I just want to share them with you. I want to prompt you to go do your own research and kind of figure out, well, how is this how are all these different things potentially impacting my wiki? Um, I haven't tested any of this. As I mentioned, I didn't uh, actually put out an extension that gamifies stuff, um, but I still would like to dabble in this. I just I want to do it in the right way. I want to um, not incentivize chaos. So uh, let's see. Yeah, so here, by the way, these slides are linked from the, uh, the, the schedule for the conference today. So if you want to reference these later, um, that'd be great. There's, uh, there's going to be a lot of text in this. Um, basically, it was just easier to do that, and that way you can read it later versus me trying to remember everything to say. Uh, but basically, like I was saying earlier, we, we are prone to bias, and we make easy, or we try to make our decisions easier because of that. We try to find mental tricks to take a shortcut. I'm going to try to show you some examples of what I mean. Uh, on the, the right here, I've got just an image uh, I'm trying to illustrate. Let's see here. Yeah. So there's, there's two things that we need to, to consider. There's bias and noise. And just to define what that means, noise means uh, let's say you have a panel of humans that are evaluating someone, a student that's trying to perform an action. Depending on, depending on how well you define your scoring system, you might get a wide range of scores from your evaluators. So that's, that's noise. Ideally, everyone would be scoring that person the same way, using the same objective criteria. But in practice, we find that people uh, read into those definitions differently, right? Bias would be if the panel of evaluators all graded the person with the same score, but that score didn't actually reflect what, they what the student should have received. And maybe they were biased based on how the question was phrased or the context of the test. And then, of course, you can have a combination of the two. So uh, today I'm going to be talking more about uh, bias. Um, I recently found out that Daniel Kahneman's also writing a book on noise, so I look forward to reading that. <clears throat> and yeah, just to actually define these terms in case you haven't really heard them before, um, bias, as I showed in the illustration there, is, is a, a deviation from the expected outcome. So you're, you're skewing your results. 
Uh, and then a heuristic is that mental shortcut. Uh, in that book, Daniel talks about um, kind of two parts of your brain. You've got the kind of lazy part that is kind of your gut feel and is what you work off of as much as you, as you can versus you kind of have another part where you really dig in and you think, okay, let me look at all the data and really consider uh, what, I'm, what I'm trying to figure out here. And most of us are just prone to taking the easy way out. So a heuristic is, is the fancy word describing that, that mental shortcut. So why do we care about this? Well, um, here's, a f so all of these are also linked off the presentation, so it makes it easy later on for you to go visit all the wiki pages about them. Um, if you read through these, you'll see that most of us believe that um, we're not prone to this. You know, we're gonna be able to, you know, okay, I understand there's bias, but I'm smart enough, I can handle this, right? Most of us think that way, but science has shown that it's just not true. It's, it's, we're just too prone to this kind of stuff. Also, uh, I saw this one, I really like the bizarreness effect. I figured maybe if I presented something just a little bit weird, maybe you guys re would remember it and appreciate it. So, I wanna talk about how wikis play into the, the bias. I'm gonna talk about things that I think wikis do that help us to mitigate bias, to uh, make better decisions than we would without a wiki. And then later on, I'll talk about things I think that we can have that are pitfalls that a wiki makes it easier to make a mistake uh, based on bias. So there's several types of bias that are basically, you're not looking at the full set of data, right? So if, if you don't have easy access to all of your information, you're only making a decision, you're making a decision only on a subset of the information that you need, then you're likely to be biased. So that's kind of what a lot of these are, are talking about. You, you may also be like attentional bias, you may be um, focused on something, kind of sidetracked, and that is gonna steer you away from considering all the possible uh, data points, right? Um, so here's some more kind of following that same theme of not having the full, full data set. And by the way, one thing that's great about a wiki that we've seen in our use case is not, not just making sure we have all of the data in the wiki, but we can also identify where we're missing information. And we can flag that, flag attention to that, and try to solicit input to fill those gaps. So, you know, again, availability heuristic, that's that mental shortcut where you, you make a decision based on, okay, I remember all these examples here, we should, we should do this thing here because of these five examples I can think of, when really you ought to be looking at the full data set of, you know, a couple hundred things. Uh, survivorship bias is a, a little bit different from those two in that, in your workflow, you might have something that is causing you to downselect from your full set of data, and so you're making a decision based on just a, a small set of information. So anchoring is, uh, is a really interesting one to me. So I wanna do a little experiment. Um, I need to turn off my mic momentarily. All right, on my back, cool. All right, you guys got your answer over here? What about you guys? Hey, no conferring, get your own answer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, do your own number. Sorry. You're right, yeah. This is group think, you'll see this one later. All right, does everybody have their answer? Okay, what I did was I asked each group, uh, do you think the tallest redwood tree is taller or shorter than X feet. For these guys, I said 100 feet. 
for these guys, I said 1,000 feet. Uh, and then I asked them to write down how tall they thought the tallest redwood tree is. So what are your guys' answers? So we got one taller, one shorter, taller. taller. So two taller, one shorter. But what were your numbers? 150, 70, 300. and 300. All right, over here. Shorter, 323. 323. 400. Shorter, 241. 241. So I'm not going to do math in public, but you can see that I influenced this group to have an average response higher than their average simply by suggesting that it might be somewhere around 1,000 feet versus 100 feet. Really, it's something like 380 feet, just to close the loop on that. But this is, this is one simple test that they've done studies on this a lot to show that you can really, I mean, you do this when you go to a car dealership. You go in and you think, oh, I'm going to go buy this car for $25,000. But you go in and they're like, sticker price is 41000 We can work from there and negotiate down. But in reality, you ought to be negotiating up from what you think it's truly valued. Now, I'm going to show you a, a page that we have in our wiki. In our training, we do several uh, training runs in the big pool, the NBL. And we train the crew when they're first learning how to work in the suit on different basic skills. And I created this matrix that has each skill tagged with each training run to identify when they practice it. So you can see that this skill and the different elements of it are practiced very frequently. This one is infrequently. And I added an algorithm that tried to predict what score they might get in a one through five scale throughout their training based on the frequency of the training. I thought I was being clever, but then I realized I was adding an anchoring effect, a set point bias. So in my opinion, this needs to be removed, but this is actually under dispute. Uh, at work right now. So this is just an example of how you can build in. So I, I was saying that wikis can be good in avoiding anchoring because you can provide the whole set of data, but you can also build into your wiki an anchoring effect. So you got to watch out for how you implement things. Yes, Mark? Uh, is anchoring always bad, though? Because if you tell them, you know, you should be doing a million of these, then they're going to be like anchored to a million. I'll have to talk that later. I'm not sure how to answer that right now, but I, yeah, I don't, yeah. All right, uh, let's, I don't want to run out of time here, so that's why I want to skip that. Um, so we'll have to kind of skip forward so I can catch up on time, but basically there are other, um, let's see here. Oh, these ones are basically if you're looking at a subset of data. These are more examples of how if you're looking at a subset of data instead of the whole set of data, you might make a bad choice. Uh, you also might make a bad choice because you just strongly b believe in something and you're going to go with the data that agree with that versus going with all the data that are just there. You know, the facts don't care about your feelings. Um, we also know that people tend to be overly confident. Like, I know that I'm right on this. Well, did you go check? Did you go look at the full set of data to make an accurate prediction? Um, people tend to underestimate how long it takes to do things. As I just said, I'm almost halfway through my time, and I'm only on 14 out of 37, so. <laughs> uh, we use our wiki at work to record lessons learned, and there, I found a couple examples of bias that uh, back that up, rationalize that. Uh, we tend to look at the past as maybe we didn't do so good and we're going to do better in the future. And so we can be kind of biased versus, um, actually, sorry, I got that backwards. We tend to look at the past as everything went pretty well. But if we actually record those lessons learned, we can go back and say, you know what, we actually made these mistakes. Let's make sure we don't repeat those. Uh, one thing I really like about the wikis, uh, that we use at work is actually forcing conflict and making people identify where we have disagreements and come to a resolution. I have a, a note on great in that I think wikis with the structured data are great at identifying these conflicts. I don't think we have the greatest discussion tools built into the wiki. 
and I think there's lots of discussion online about that, about how to, how to move forward from there. Uh, but yeah, here's a few other examples where um, we are biased in assuming that a lot of people agree with us when really they may not. So this one's a little bit interesting in that people are a little bit averse to things that um, weren't built by their group. They want to use what's, what's, what came from their people, a little bit of tribalism. Um, but with a wiki, you can use APIs and tie things in, and we've done a lot of that at NASA. I, I really also appreciate the transparency of wikis. You can go into the page history, you can see who did each edit uh, and when. Um, you can see who's contributing and who is not. Um, and there are some biases about uh, you know, people thinking that they're more unique in their thinking than, than others, or people attributing things to a whole group when really it's just a couple people that have this different opinion. And with the wiki metadata, you can actually dive in and figure that out. So let's talk about some of the ways, some of the pitfalls, some of the ways you can get yourself in trouble by using a wiki. So uh, here's a few biases that are just going full in and just saying, you know what, automation is great, let's just automate everything. Well, you still need humans to kind of figure things out. Um, and I'll talk a little bit later about how you could actually accidentally put bias into your algorithms. Um, but this one in the middle here, default effect, I think is kind of a lot more important than you might initially think. Just simply, for example, in our wiki, we default so that anybody that edits a page becomes a watcher because we want people to watch and review pages. That's not necessarily true unless you configure it that way. But just that one little change is gonna incentivize people because they're just, they're lazy. They're not gonna go think to go check that box or not. And so if you make it the default, you know, now you get that, that action. But also on the contrary, if you make things default that have bad consequences, right? That's why I'm saying that can be a negative. Uh, the Google effect, uh, I saw this in a sim. So we train our flight controllers uh, in simulations and we test their ability to be resourceful, go find the information they need, make quick decisions and support the crew. And the wiki's great, but uh, we found that some of our newer flight controllers were relying solely on the wiki and when we decided to pull, the, pull their access during the sim just to see how they would react, they didn't know how to find the information without it. And so I love that they use the wiki, but I also want that person to be resourceful enough that they have backup methods to get their information, right? Um, <laughs> this one's a little bit strange, but basically it's, it's, there can be a bias where you start to look for patterns where they aren't. So are there any data scientists here? Any mathematicians, statisticians? Probably not, right? I'm not either, I did get a minor in math, but even still, I don't feel like I'm strong enough to really do this. So, you know, it might be worthwhile to, to employ a data scientist, a statistician, to help you make good decisions with your wiki. Uh, it is important to cite your sources with your wiki. We try to emphasize that at work, but I don't think we do a good enough job. So, you know, what if you have your manager makes an edit in the wiki, but they put something that's wrong? Just because they're an authority doesn't mean they're right. Just because someone says something over and over, just because it has propagated its way through several pages in your wiki, doesn't mean it's right. So you need to check that. Depending on the size of your wiki, I think it, th this is one of the reasons I think that having broader wikis across an entire agency or, or organization is important because if you have smaller scoped wikis, the smaller your group, I would think the stronger these effects of groupthink and bandwagoning are going to impact your wiki because you're gonna tend to have similar mindsets. You also might, depending on how small your group is, you may not get direct constructive feedback on what things need to be fixed because people tend to wanna be nice to those people that are right inside their group. I realize I'm blazing through this, but hopefully you guys will go back and, and read this stuff when you have more time. Uh, also, 
the people in your group might frame a, the, the data related to a question in a certain way, but that may not answer the question the right way. You may need to get people outside your group to, to look at your data and figure out what it is you're actually trying to answer because you've always looked at it the same way. You might not get the real answer. Also, just by the nature of wikis, they're online. We all know that being online, not having someone in front of you gives you that brazenness of anonymity. You know, you can say things uh, that end up being misconstrued. So even on a wiki, things can get a little hostile just because you don't have that person right there like, oh, I didn't actually mean that. I was just asking a question. Like, what did you say on the talk page? So, and you could also kind of assume that, oh, why, why did they make that change? That page was perfect, why did they do that? Well, it wasn't malintent, it was just, they just wanted to make it better. So how can we take this forward and, and you know, make, make better of our wikis with this information? So I'm gonna kind of skip this, but this is stuff that I've already talked about. Making sure you have all of your information, identifying those gaps, integrating with other sources. Uh, I mentioned, um, I'm, well, maybe I didn't mention, but I'll point out auditing your wiki. Make sure you don't just rely only on the information in your wiki. So one case where we verify that we're always using the right info is we have a script that runs every night and it pulls in these rules that we have to abide by for safety. And anytime a new one is added, it adds a wiki page for us. Anytime it's changed, it revised that wiki, revises that wiki page. So hopefully we are trusting the whole system and not just our wiki. Just because our wiki is growing and strong, we don't wanna just blindly trust it. We wanna make sure that we're testing it against these new rules that are coming in. There's this phrase that uh, Daniel mentions in his book, all you see is all there is, and I think it's important to, to retain that uh, when you're working on your wiki. So you don't know what you don't know is another way of putting it, right? So if you, if you only have a subset of all the data that is possible for you to gather, then you might be making a decision based on a, a set of data that would guide you in a, in a certain direction, whereas if you have the full set, you might make a different decision, right? So these quotes down here are kind of good analogies. So uh, you might get a report from someone, and that report might frame the, the, the data in a certain way and guide you with a certain recommendation. But if you only got one report from one person, that's not giving you the whole story probably. And if you're making, depending on how important your decision is, you might need to get multiple inputs, yeah. Um, I'm sorry to distract you. What's, what's the meaning of that first sentence there? Uh, what I mean to say it another way is, unless you have gone to extra efforts to make sure that your wiki contains all of the data. Like, you have identified where your gaps are. So, it, so contrarily, if you had a wiki and you just assumed you had all the data, but really you only had 75% of the data, you just didn't know you were missing some of it, you're making a decision assuming that you have all the data points. Is that? Well, I, I was just thinking if I know that my wiki contains every piece of data, I am wrong. If you think that, well not, I'm saying like, so let's say you have 100 widgets at your company, but you actually only have 80 of them have wiki pages, and okay. you know, like, I guess that's what so, I was trying so to get at. Discrete, you're talking about? Discrete. Yeah, yeah, I'm not saying the sum of all knowledge, I'm saying, right. <laughs> I'm, that's Wikipedia. Yeah, sum of all knowledge, not the sum of all, like S-O-M-E versus S-U-M, yeah. <laughs> Um, I would recommend that you put your wiki into the workflow of every employee, because if it's not part of the status quo, if it's not part of your system, then they're gonna be averse to using it. Um, and they're, yeah, and so these ones go back kind of to the, to the first list that I started with of just making sure that you have um, of all of the information being considered. So if, if it's in the workflow, and it's gonna make it more, not, more likely that each user is gonna catch little things that are missing and then they're gonna contribute back to it. That's my point there. Uh-oh. There we go. Uh, when you're designing your wiki, make sure you consider all of your users. 
So this first one here, it's easy as you get better and better, you level up in your wiki. Um, you might get frustrated with the, the new users. Um, you might not think the same way as them, but you need to design it in a way that everybody can make use of it. Uh, again, that default effect, I already talked about that earlier, but be careful how you set your defaults. And then, yeah, don't, don't always think about just because it looks like a hammer that it's designed and it's designed for hitting a nail that it can't be used for something else. So you might create your wiki in a certain way, but down the road someone might come around and say, hey, you know what, we could do this other thing with it and look at the data from a different way. So I'm going to kind of fast forward here because I'm running down on time. I know others have talked about onboarding before, so there's a few, there were a few items on that page with biases, biases, uh, about that. I like the Ben Franklin effect because if you ask someone, just do me a favor, just go make one edit on the wiki. For some reason that makes them more likely to want to return and do more. I'm not sure why, but I think that's kind of cool. I also like the IKEA effect just because it's a cool name. If you convince each user that they are an author, they are a contributor, that is their wiki, they own it, they'll be more likely to play. And Kind of to close things out, there's the bike shedding uh, rule. People that can't um, handle the, or people that don't, people that can spend time wor uh, worrying about some minor trivial issue are going to choose that rather than talking about a more technical topic if you give them that, that opportunity. <coughs> and so again, there's a lot of words here. I encourage you to read it afterwards. but. Think about what, what is the priority of your wiki? Which information in your wiki is more important than the others? Is it important that our meeting minutes are in red and blue text? Or is it important that we get accurate numbers on all of our semantic properties? And I assume the latter is true in your case, so make that more approachable, more easy for your user. And I'll just add, I, I mentioned earlier knowledge gaps, right? So just because you might be missing some pieces of data in your wiki, even if you've identified them, just because you don't know the values of, that, of those data points doesn't mean they're meaningless. So I kind of skipped past this, but um, items of information in a wiki have the kind of the metadata of like what is the property, so like the capital of California or whatever, but then being nudged. Uh, but then what is the meaning of like, how important is that piece of information to you? Like what are you gonna do with it? What's your action out of that? All right, I got two minutes for questions. So I thought it was interesting your comment about backup information and making sure that people are able to go find you know this information somewhere else. But how does that compare when maybe the wiki is the single source of truth and it isn't necessarily referenced elsewhere? I mean, isn't that an argument for the wiki's ability to, to disseminate knowledge? Yeah, so you're saying if someone typed in information to the wiki and that's the only place that it was that's where, that's created where, or stored? Yeah, or that's where it is. Yeah, well, so I guess, I don't know totally the answer to that, but one thing that we do is, let's say we have an email conversation or a conversation in the hallway with some engineer, we'll actually do a citation uh, tag and we'll just say like hallway conversation with this person on this day. I mean, at least then it gives it a little bit more credibility than just this is true. You know, just trying to give it some background. I'll say something while I'm walking. I th think the curse of knowledge one is really interesting. And where I see that has happened to me is I've been writing extensions for a super long time. And back about 11 years ago when I wrote my first extension, is that accurate? About that. Um, I read the documentation on MediaWiki.org. And I have to admit, I haven't really looked at it since then. So there's probably a lot of extra stuff there that for new users and as things change, is it gets updated. But in my mind, that stuff isn't there because it wasn't there when I looked at it in the wiki before. So how to, as a 
somebody with knowledge to, to know to go back and see things that have changed and that are new. You know, I have a bias, no, you know, I think there's stuff not there that actually is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it'd be interesting, you know, all this talk about creating easy installers and, and, and releases and stuff, it'd be good to include people that are brand new to it to, to test it on them to make sure that it is foolproof. Before I say anything and use up all the rest of the time, does anyone else have a question? <laughs> I think we are out of time, but... Oh, there's one over there. It's just coffee break, right? <laughs> you can tell people to go start. Sure, yeah, it's fine with me. Yeah, thanks very much for your presentation. I was just wondering if you looked at some of the human factors, as in conditioning, training, experience, intelligence, when you were considering some of the bias that you put up there because uh, obviously it depends on the person that's actually looking at the information and his background and the paradigm that he's actually in. I'm sorry, I missed most of that. Okay. So you've put up there a lot of bias. Uh -huh. um, I was wondering if you looked at the human factors as in the person that's actually looking at the information, trying to understand the information as well. So things like experience, training, knowledge, intelligence. You know, you just mentioned new users. You know, so that, that obviously has an influence in how they perceive the information that's presented to them. So I wonder if you looked at the human factors as well, the type of people that are looking at the information. Mm. I don't know, guys from NASA, do you have any feedback on, like have we done analysis to look at how our different users are behaving based on their experience level and their org code and that stuff? I can't think of anything, but a lot of the things that you put up there, it's not necessarily, you know, just a wiki that do that. You know, if you look at Facebook and the way people are influenced in Facebook with the way the information is presented to them. So any, uh, even walking into a library, mm. you know, how people perceive information. Yeah. I, so again, I'm not, I, a lot of this I am just recently kind of pulling up and this is forward work for us. I can't say that I have a lot of experience testing this out and have guidance for you. Within my own organization, they have a thing called the Conspiracy of Optimism. And it's influenced by uh, rank. It's influenced by vendors, suppliers, uh, the background of the person, where they come from. Uh, so if, if you ask an army officer, the answer is always a tank. If you ask a navy officer, it's always a ship. Mm. You know, Air Force, it's always a plane. So there's a, there's a good paper on the Conspiracy of Optimism that was written by the National uh, audit office on how we actually procure equipment. Okay. So that's quite, a, so and that's all to do with the background and the conditioning of the person. Okay, okay. I'll, look, I'll look for that. Mark, did you still want to? Okay, cool. Well, I think we're ready for a break then. We will get back together at 345.